It was 50 years ago, almost to the hour, that the 1971 Silmar earthquake struck the San Fernando Valley. That was a 6.6 .6 magnitude quake. It killed 65 people, injured thousands more, and left a half billion dollars in damage in its way. Our Leslie Lopez is here with a look at why that earthquake mm. was a big turning point in the science of earthquakes. Leslie? Yeah, it really was. It was a major disaster here in the Los Angeles area, and it actually ruptured along a fault line that wasn't previously known to be a threat here. Now, renowned, renowned seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones, I did speak to her, and she did help explain what this means, at least that earthquake five decades ago, to our science here today. Take a look. The reason Southern California is a wonderful place to live is because of the earthquakes. Whenever you see mountains in California, you need to think earthquakes. Something is pushing them up faster than erosion is bringing them down. Nearly everywhere we look in Southern California, our mountains tell a story over hundreds of millions of years. Heat released from the Earth's molten core drives that movement of plates at the Earth's surface, gradually changing the position of entire continents. Here in California, we are on the boundary between the North American plate, which extends from the San Andreas to Iceland, and the Pacific Plate, which extends all the way from the San Andreas Fault to Japan. As the plates move, stress builds up beneath the Earth's surface. The heat inside the Earth needs to get out, tries to cool off. So hot lava comes up in some places, pushes the rocks out. The force of the 1971 Silmar quake actually pushed the Santa Susana Mountains up by about six feet because it's a thrust fault pushing one side of the fault up and over, as you can see in this model. So what was different about 71 is that we ruptured through a fault through houses. And we saw all of these houses ripped apart. And it helped change the focus and made us realize that this is a big risk for, uh, for Los Angeles in particular. And so the fault goes right through this propane facility. Brian Olson with the California Geological Survey took us on a tour of where the Silmar San Fernando Fault ruptured to the surface that day back in 1971. This block went up just shy of three feet and the, on the far side it moved to the, to the left about eight inches. Here's a home on Chippewa Street in Silmar back in 1971. It broke through the, uh, the grass. That is the expression of the fault. So the fault forced this side up, about a foot up and about a foot to the left. The same home still there today with a retaining wall to accommodate the earth pushed up in the quake. Twelve and a half miles of the San Fernando Silmar Fault broke the surface that day. But that fault is part of a larger fault zone that stretches east along the San Gabriel Mountains as the Sierra Madre Fault and all the way out to Rancho Cucamonga where it meets up with the San Andreas Fault. We could move all the way from, from Cajon Pass to Santa Barbara. Now, if, we, if it actually did that, we would be over approaching magnitude 8, and it would be by far the worst earthquake we could have. We don't think this fault moves all together at once. Oftentimes when people think about the big one, they think about the San Andreas Fault. I'm actually standing on top of the San Andreas Fault here in San Bernardino. It starts south in the Salton Sea and cuts across San Bernardino through the Cajon Pass and continues northbound into San Francisco and ends at Cape Mendocino. We talk about the San Andreas because the magnitude is probably the largest. We know that we can get a 7.9 easily on that. Uh, we could pretty easily get an 8.2. The longer the fault, the bigger the earthquake. And the San Andreas Fault is about 800 miles long. The 1971 Silmar quake also led to an expansion of the seismic network. There are more than 1,800 seismometers across Southern California. We have them in the ground. We have them installed in buildings, bridges, all throughout California. And the idea with this is we want to collect real time and real life shaking data from real earthquakes. When an earthquake hits, the statewide MyShake app can take that data and push it to your cell phone, a key component of the earthquake early warning system. Earthquake. Drop, cover, hold on. Now we can get that information so quickly from stations all across California that we now know the earthquake's underway within less than a second. And the 
earthquake doesn't happen over the whole fault all at the same time. It ruptures down the fault just like if you were tearing a piece of paper. The big one on the San Andreas Fault could last 100 seconds. So depending upon how far away you are from the epicenter, you could get seconds or you can get up to a minute of early warning to drop, cover and hold. Mm. And you know, the big goal here is to make sure that those early warning systems are tied into our infrastructure. So that way, if trains are going, the trains would automatically stop. Elevators would stop at the nearest floor. And then if there are any surgeries taking place, doctors would get that early warning alert too to just continue and hopefully find safety for them and their patients. I mean, these are all things that are really uh, here at our forefront and hopefully will continue on quickly into our future. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel and download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku to watch on your TV.